Hello and welcome. I'm going to be doing this kestrel today on one of my little Frisk postcards. This is the second in our um, animals, birds, um, rather than landscape postcards. So I have already um, sketched this out roughly. Um, and I will include the reference picture and I will also include a sketch as a PDF that um, you might want to download if you're not um, too keen on drawing yourself. Um, you could take that PDF, scan it in and make it the right size. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully that will help. So what am I using today? I've got my Frisk 300 GSM postcard here that is um, cold pressed. I have got my Daniel Smith colours today. So um, I've got buff titanium, Nicolazo yellow, Aussie red gold, Quinn sienna, pyrrole orange, transparent red oxide, pimentite sepia, lunar blue, indigo, olive green and undersea green. So those are the colours. Um, this was a palette that I put together for autumn last year, but I just thought that these colours would be quite good for what we're doing today with our little kestrel. Um, I'm not sure I use all of these, but I have got my Escoda Perla size 8, which has got a nice point on it. I've got a Pro Art Proline Zero, which is a rigger, so it's, it's quite long and pointy. And then I've also got my Van Gogh size 8 round. Um, that one hasn't got quite so much of a point on it, as you can see. And if I decide to do a bit of things in the background, I thought that would be quicker to use. I've also got my little um, mixing palette here. Does that say muddy ceramic I got that from eBay so that's what I'm going to be using I've got my water here the water isn't blue it's the jar that's blue <laughs> it was a blue glass jar that had a candle in it and I've already put the reference picture up in the corner there for you to see so let's make a start and I think I'm going to start with my number eight Escoda. And I think what I will do is some of this, get some of this dark grey in. But um, I'm probably going to be using indigo, which is similar-ish. What I might do is add a little bit of sepia to it. And that might, yeah, that tones it down to more of a grey. So let's, um, without trying to get my head in, let's try and get this grey part in. So we've got this bit coming across like so. And that goes right above the eye then we've got this gray part coming down here and a little gray part coming down here and then we've got a bit of gray here on the wings with just a little patch of white there I will be using my bleed proof white for any of the white and then that little wing comes down like so. We've also got a little bit of grey on these. Should we call them bracelets? I don't really know what you'd call them. But anyways, we've got a little bit of grey on there. And we'll do the um, little grey dots afterwards. So let's get transparent red oxide I think I think that might be might need to adjust it or maybe not 
I think I'll water that down a bit. That's probably going to be all right for this main body for the bird. And that's coming down there. And that goes across here. And down here. Now we have got some white going on, so we will leave some of that because we need to blend that white in. So actually that transparent red oxide has um, worked really well. We need something a little bit more yellowy for our legs and feet and I'm going to use the Aussie red gold for that. And this brush is just perfect because it really has got a nice point on it. So there we go. And we're going to need a bit of that for just around the top of that beak. Like so, I think. So let's get our bleed, bleed blah, 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 blah. try again. Let's get our bleed proof white and get some of that white in. So we need a white here, and it is still wet. And I, I want it to blend basically, I, I don't want it to look. Um, as if I plonked white down. <laughs> and then we've got this white coming down here. And in fact, there's a dark a bit there, isn't there? That I've kind of missed. So we will pop that in like so, because that comes around like that. And then we really need to get some of these grey bits in. So let's go back to our... indigo with a bit of sepia and that's probably got a bit of white in it as well but it doesn't matter and we need to get some of these little marks in while everything's still wet so we've got some of our little marks in and that beak is white and he's not really standing out much at the moment, but I think once we get a background in there, we will be fine. So, let's add a little bit of white there, coming round. I'm not sure if that's better or not. I'll bring that up so that you can see what I've done so far. So um, we need that to dry. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to get our uh, branch in next. And I'm just going to use sepia and 
keep the consistency color wise. So we'll get some sepia down here for our branch. And to give it some interest, I'm going to dab in some indigo so that it's got some texture to it. Right, let's try that and then I'm going to get some background in, do the eye and then I'm going to use some coloured pencils to bring out our bird a little bit more, our kestrel. Okay, so let's get our, I'm going to go for a bigger brush now and, well it's not bigger actually, it's just that it doesn't have so much of a point on it and we need this really dark background but it looks to me as though it's maybe even got a bit of green in it or something. So uh, what should we use? Should we try using the undersea green? Because I think that goes quite dark. And I'm going to mix it with the sepia to get a really dark background. We need a bit more of the undersea green. We can see that that's, I don't mind that it's mixing in with the grey. It's, um, it just means that we've got some good colour consistency going on across the whole of the painting. might have to get my pointy brush out in a minute. To do round by the legs. I'm hoping that our kestrel is going to stand out a bit more once I've done this background go straight in with the undersea green round here. Right, pointy brush again. Let's get my pointy brush back out because I need to kind of go between these feet here as carefully as I can. And I'm just adding, because I want it to be darker, so I'm just adding more of the undersea green. Thank you. 
and then what I'm going to do is because I want some variation in that really dark background although there's not that much in that I'm just going to add a few little splats of water so that it it's not just boring right okay I think we also need to add in a little bit of this sea green on this branch like so okay let us dry this and get some pencils out right I think that's pretty much dry so I've pulled out some uh, coloured pencils here I have got a Caran d'Ache Luminance it's the Payne's Grey and I'm just going to add some coloured pencil here for some for a little bit of texture and also around this top bit here and this little bit here there we go and maybe we'll just have a little line there and we want that to be like so um okay i think if we try and do the eye i'm going to be using this is a stabilo all water soluble paper glass plastic metal um and i'm going to use that for the eye so that i can be a bit more precise and i just need to make sure that i leave tiny bit there like so and then let's do a little bit more with the fur not fur feathers get it right so what have I got here I've got uh, natural russet which is Caran d'Ache luminance and I've got sandstone which is Derwent light fast and I just want to a little bit more texture going on here just going to use the side of the pencil on this main body bit And then in actual fact, there is like a little grey line there, isn't there? Yeah. And that bit, if I squint, this bit is actually darker. Like it's in shadow. So we'll get that bit in there. And then we've got our little, our little marks. In fact, there's some little marks on the wing there. I want that to be blended in a bit better with the white there. So I'm just going to add a bit more. Just says so it doesn't look too... And this needs to be a bit darker down there. We could also add, which one should we use? Russet. Let's just get a little bit more going on with our branch here. 
go back to our sandstone and just define the feet a little bit more. Like so. And I think we're beginning to look a lot better. I think I've got quite a lot of sunlight coming in today, which probably isn't helping. So let me have a better look at that beak. I think we need a bit there. And I need to define that beak a bit more. Beak is not... So very carefully, I'm just there. That's a bit better. And we've got this little dot there. Like so. Hmm. Well, I don't think he looks too bad. Let me bring him up a lot closer for you like that. Let's see what it looks like if we take the washi tape off, whichever way around it goes. Typically the other way, okay. Do this bit. There we go. And then hmm. let's go this way. There we go rid of my washi tape and there we have him our little kestrel which I think makes quite a nice little postcard and I quite like the undersea green as the background there um, and the, the water splashes it just gives it some a little edge I'm not so keen on this bit here. Can we do anything there? Maybe if I use this Derwent Blender. Oh, now I'm going to get carried away with the blender. I think that's helped. Right. Don't get carried away, Michelle. There you go. There's your kestrel. I'll give you the um, outline and the link to the reference photo. But I think that makes um, our second um, animal postcard. The first one was the flamingo. Now we've done the uh, kestrel. So I hope you enjoy, um, you know, doing your own little kestrel. And... Um, Yes, I've got um, a couple of, what have I got? I need, I need to put some paints in these, which is why I've done a poll um, asking if you had 12 spaces on a little travel palette, which is what both of these have, how would you lay it out? Would you do warm and... Um, half and half warm and cool colors would you make sure that they were all the same uh, make or brand like these are all um, Daniel Smith or there's the option to comment below on actually which 12 colors would you put in a little minimalistic palette like those so that's what I'm going to be looking at soon 
um yeah hope you enjoyed that everybody look naughty me naughty me brushes in the water take them out michelle um yes enjoy take care stay well and uh, hopefully I will uh, see you next time. Please do subscribe. It really, really helps me. It costs nothing. Um, and you don't even have to click the notification bell for all of my videos if you don't want to. But I would be really grateful if you would um, subscribe. Thank you, everybody. See you soon.